Hello and welcome back to the Siege Weapons of Stronghold, our latest and greatest series here at Firefly Studios YouTube. Today I'll be taking you through three unannounced Siege Weapons coming to the game uh, in what will be hopefully our latest and greatest entry in the series, Stronghold Warlords. With Warlords, we've found a sweet spot between our gunpowder-fueled Siege Weapons inspired by Chinese, Korean and Mongolian history, uh, as well as a few classic returning units from past games. While this means you'll both be using gunpowder to take out enemy castles and defend your own, you'll also be relying on a few stronghold staples to have a successful siege. Because at the end of the day, gunpowder isn't the greatest tool for things like transporting troops, uh, shielding them from arrow fire, or catapulting a 90 kilogram object over 300 meters. We have a spectacle! So stay tuned if you'd like to find out if your favorite Stronghold Siege weapon is returning when Stronghold Warlords releases on Steam later this year. Just to note, if this is your first time on the Firefly Studios YouTube channel, then welcome. Uh, we've released new videos pretty much every week covering things like gameplay, uh, dev diaries, and behind the scenes tomfoolery. I quite, I quite like monkeys. Oh, really? So if Asian siege warfare and Roman city buildings sound like they're up your street, don't forget to subscribe here on Firefly Studios YouTube and hit that notification bell to find out the latest from us. Warlord's Fire Arrow Cart, or Huacha, is one of the most well-known gunpowder-based siege weapons in all of history. The Huacha was the latest in a long line of both Korean and Chinese fire arrow launchers. Despite attempts by China to preserve gunpowder state secrets, their technology would eventually lead to the creation of the Huacha in Korea, after key documents and a few gunpowder samples allowed for some clever reverse engineering. Considered by many to have as great an impact on the course of Asian military history as Admiral Yi's famous turtle ships, the Huacha famously helped defend the Korean Peninsula from invading Japanese forces in the 1590s. With a range of 2,000 meters and the ability to fire dozens of iron-headed arrows in a wide spread, the Huacha proved itself in these battles by making short work of the tightly packed Japanese infantry. According to one account, the Huacha even had its own 300 moment, when 3,400 Koreans apparently repelled 30,000 Japanese troops with the help of just 40 Huachas. With numbers like that, I'm sure King Leonidas himself will be proud. In Warlords, the fire arrow cart comes in two varieties. The castle defense turret, shown in our alpha demo last year, and the portable siege weapon we're revealing today. Ideal for mowing down squads of tightly packed unarmored units, the fire arrow cart uses its widespread volley to make your opponent think twice about moving in formation. An excellent addition to any siege army, the arrow cart's primary function then is to decimate your enemy's frontline forces out on the field. Cannon fodder like the tribesmen units will be taken down fairly quickly. while likely armoured units can be softened up to give you an advantage in the ensuing melee. This means the arrow cart tends to have a place in most attacking siege armies, with the exception of highly armoured troops like the Imperial Warrior, who will be less impressed by your attempts on their lives. A secondary function involves using the arrow cart as part of your main castle attack. While its ammunition will simply ping off stone walls, it can be useful for clearing them. Find and take out a group of enemy archers unprotected by towers or hoardings, and the fire arrow cart can be the difference between your siege weapons making it within firing range and that army just turning into one very big expensive mistake. Now obviously the Hawacha has a rich history behind it and it's great for taking out enemy units and infantry, but sometimes we need to get a little bit more inspired and we need something that can blast the hole, Helm's Deep style, through castle walls. Introducing the rocket launcher. Just like the brave Fire Ox, our rocket launcher is another example of Firefly's devs taking inspiration from historical accounts and turning them into a slightly mad but fun video game weapon. Previously in our special units video, we introduced you to the Fire Lancer. We take an inspiration for this troop type from the Fire Dragon Manual, also known as, and I hope I said this right, Huaolong Jing. This was a 14th century Chinese military treatise designed to serve as a guide for gunpowder-based weaponry. Many illustrations in the Huarong Jing depict siege weapons based on earlier uses of fire arrows and others using multiple projectiles, which culminated in the Korean Huacha. In Warlords, however, we needed something capable of damaging and eventually destroying castle defences. Luckily, the manual also describes a few different kinds of rocket launcher that fit our purpose. Most notably, there are accounts of oblong rockets using artificial wings to increase their aerodynamic stability and thus range. 
rising hundreds of feet before landing at their designated target. The end result is a powerful addition to your siege sandbox, one that can be supplied by either building a siege camp or by requesting them from the Dragon Ward. While it's no one-shot solution to taking out castle walls, that award still goes to the ultimate siege weapon of course, a few rocket launchers are ideal for blowing apart siege defences. Towers and gatehouses are the targets of choice for Warlord's rocket launcher, with the ability to shatter an exposed enemy tower filled with archers, or blow apart a defenceless gatehouse with a series of successful strikes. Balancing something like this is of course key, so there's plenty stopping the rocket launcher from becoming our version of the Command & Conquer super weapons. Our base is under attack. Unit lost. For one thing, each rocket launcher is limited to a single shot, with the ramp that carries it blowing apart after launch and the engineer responsible returning to your siege camp. It's also slow moving and must be protected during transport. That is, unless you want to make the classic mistake with gunpowder weapons, accidentally setting your entire army on fire because you failed to notice that approaching horse archer. Finally, as you might imagine for a large rocket propelled object being fired from a cart, the rocket launcher isn't 100% accurate and will occasionally miss its target. That said, this can be balanced by just making sure there are enemies behind the target, so at least you'll hit something worthwhile. Warlord's rocket launcher then is our glass cannon and the epitome of gunpowder in the game, able to cause chaos and destruction for whoever's unlucky enough to be on the receiving end, you included. Sometimes though, explosions simply aren't enough and the greatest castles of both history and fiction weren't taken with gunpowder alone, which is why we're giving you plenty of options for breaching those pesky castle walls. As we've said before, despite its new setting, Warlords is a mix of old and new. A greatest hits collection of some of the series' best features, mixed in with completely new units and mechanics. From Fear Factor and the bonus economic campaign to the Scribe and returning units, Warlords is as much about reviving some of the best bits of our past as looking to the future. We've already revealed Ladderman as a returning troop type, but what about siege equipment? The high walls of Minas Tirith weren't breached with a few well-placed ladders and neither will the most well-fortified strongholds in Warlords. As such, we decided to bring back the classic Siege Tower, a mobile fortress capable of transporting and protecting any non-cavalry troop types on their attacking approach. That's right, just like everyone's favourite Orc Lieutenant in the Battle of Pelennor Fields, you too will be able to command mighty Siege Towers. A highly armoured transport, mechanically the Siege Tower works just like the Ladderman, latching onto enemy walls before pouring troops onto the ramparts with a far greater capacity and a clear advantage in terms of resilience to fire and archer attacks, the Siege Tower is in a league of its own when it comes to besting enemy walls without actually breaching them. Once docked, the Siege Tower becomes a fast track for your troops up and onto enemy walls, vulnerable only to squads of the most powerful enemy units and explosive or impactful siege weaponry. The Siege Tower is one of the most expensive and rewarding tools to use in the game. Your enemies will never know what hit them. So there you have it, plenty of options for decimating enemy units, uh, blowing apart castle walls, and flooding their towers with so many troops that even Saruman the Wise himself would be proud. Fire arrows and medieval rocket launchers were a large part of the reason why we were so interested in adapting this period of history in the first place, so it gives us great pleasure to see them in-game and we hope to get them into your hands as soon as possible. As we went over in the spring dev update, it's worth noting we're still building out the campaigns and the multiplayer, uh, so balancing has all to come. You can expect updates on things like game balance as we get uh, much closer to release as we go through the year. Uh, speaking of which, if you want to find out the release date, and we know that a few of you have been asking us about that, uh, the easiest way to find out the release date for the game is simply to wishlist it on Steam. Wishlists, of course, help primarily with Warlords, but they also contribute to the future of the Stronghold series by showing people like Steam and other players that there is a market for these kind of games and that you want to play them. And also, we are so close to overtaking Total War in the Steam wishlist chart. I mean, look, there's like three games between Warlords and Total War Troy. We can take them. As always, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe here on Firefly Studios YouTube for more unit and siege weapon reveals to come.